الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من هاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءهم أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو أشيرتهم أولئك كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان وأيدهم بروح منه ويدخلهم, ويدخلهم جنات تجري من تحت الأنهار خالدين فيها رضي الله عن ورضوا عن أولئك حزب الله ألا إن حزب الله هم المفلحون سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصف وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Dear respected brothers, elders and sisters, whatever object or entity Allah Rabbul Izzat has placed in this dunya, in this world, it has an attraction, it has a flavor. Whatever Allah Rabbul Izzat has placed in this dunya, that object or that entity, it has some qualities. Which distinguishes, it, which distinguishes itself from others. Everything in its own way, in its own fashion, in its own manner, in its own being is independent from everything. Why is it independent? Because of that inclination, because of that attraction, and because of that quality which Allah Rabbul Izzat has embedded in that thing. MashaAllah, if there's 50, 60 people seated in the masjid, everyone is different. Even though we all have the same characteristics, even though we all have the same characteristics, we are different. We are different from each other. We have a different flavor. Everyone has got a different flavor. Everyone has a different inclination. Everyone has a different attraction. Like you see the flower, the rose petal, is, it, distinguishes, it, is, it distinguishes itself from the rest of the flowers because of its fragrance, because of its smell. Compared to other flowers, its smell is outstanding. On the same token, a mango, it distinguishes itself from the other fruits because of its taste. You cannot describe how a mango tastes. You have to eat a mango to understand the taste and the flavor of a mango. But once you taste a mango, then no one can mistake. No one can mistake you. No one can give you an apple saying it is a mango. And no one can give you an orange saying it is a mango. And no one can, even if a person wraps up some fruit and gives it to you and says it's a mango, because you have tasted the mango, that person cannot deceive you. The reason being is you have tasted the mango. On the same token, Iman, Yaqeen, a love for the Prophet, it has an inclination, it has an attraction and it has a flavor. Once you taste that flavor, that flavor, that inclination, that attraction, it will distinguish you from the rest of the makhluk of Allah Rabbul Izzat. It will distinguish you. Like the taste and the flavor of a mango distinguishes itself from the rest of the fruit. On the same token, Iman, Yaqeen, love for the Prophet will distinguish you from the rest of the makhluk of Allah Rabbul Izzat. Whatever sacrifice Allah will demand, you will be ready to give. Because you have tasted the flavor of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The sweetest flavor you can experience in this dunya. The sweetest thing you can experience in this dunya. It is the obedience. And it is the devotion to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nothing is more sweet than the devotion to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nothing is more sweet than to look at the Prophet of Allah. Today we all claim to love the Prophet of Allah. But how, much, how many of us in the middle of the night, in the darkness of the night, 
We long for the company of the Prophet of Allah. We long, we cry. Tears shed from our eyes and they roll on our cheeks. Longing to see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Longing to be in his company. Longing to just be with him, to be friends with him. Today our children, if they are sick, our wife is sick. It is hard to sleep at night, my dear respected brothers. It's thought provoking. My family is sick. But there's something greater than that love for the wife, for the children. It is the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is that love that did not let the Sahaba sit in peace, sleep in peace. There's not one incident, there's hundreds and thousands of incidents in the lives of the Sahaba where we can see this devotion. And I don't have to mention this devotion, Allah mentions it Himself in the glorious Quran. Allah says, Thou will not find folk who believe in Allah in the last day, loving those who oppose Allah and his messenger even though they be their fathers or their sons or their brethren or their clan. Abu Abaydah ibn Jarrah radiallahu an, one of the great companions of the Prophet of Allah. He accompanied the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the very first battle of Islam. against the chieftains of Makkah, the leaders of Makkah. He was amongst those 313 fortunate souls that partook and participated in this battle. And the Muhaddisun say, say, if you can read in your dua, the 330 names of the Badri Sahaba, the Sahaba that partook and participated in the Battle of Badr, your dua will not be rejected. If you can say their name, read their name in the dua, through the intercession make dua, your dua will not be rejected. In the Battle of Badr, Abu Abaida ibn Jarrah was confronted by his father, Abdullah ibn Jarrah. In the initial stages and throughout the battle, Abu, Abu Abayda ibn Jarrah tried to avoid confronting his father. He did not want to confront his father. Sometimes to understand what I am about to say or to understand what we are reading, sometimes we have to transport ourselves in that time. We should transport ourselves in that time and just imagine for a second that we are in that environment, we are in that climate and I'm in the shoes of Abu, Abu Abaydah ibn Jarrah an. what would I do? It is not that a small group of 124,000 people changed the fate of mankind. It was their devotion, it was their commitment it was their love, it was their sincer sincerity, it was their loyalty to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He tried to avoid his father till the end. But eventually what prevailed was his father, he removed all obstacles. His father removed all the obstacles between him and his son. Sana Abu Abaydah ibn Jarrah. He can see his father in front of him and his father wants to attack him. But what does Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah do? Does he leave the battlefield? Does he run away? No. As his father pounds to attack him, he kills his father. And after this incident, these verses of the glorious Quran were revealed. That way there will be some people who will love Allah and His Rasul so much that those people that will oppress or oppose the Prophet of Allah, 
even if it is their fathers, even if it is their children, even if it is their brothers, they will eliminate and remove them out of the love of Allah and His Rasul. Today it is hard to imagine, it is hard to comprehend. Allama ibn Kasir, under the commentary of this verse, he says, when Allah says, even though they be their fathers, this was revealed regarding Abu Abaida ibn Jarrah, that he removed his father from the way. Or their sons, this was regarding Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu an, that he was ready to remove his son in the battlefield of Badr when his son was opposing the Prophet of Allah. And their brothers, this is regarding Masab ibn Umair, who killed his brother Ubaid ibn Umair because his brother was opposing the Prophet of Allah in the Battle of Badr. Can we imagine? It is impossible to think, it is impossible to comprehend, but once you taste the flavor of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's love, once you taste the sweetness of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's love, then the biggest sacrifice becomes easy. Mahisa ibn Masood radiallahu an. When the treachery and the wickedness and the animosity and the hatred of the Jews increased in Madinatul Manawra, they started a guerrilla warfare. They started a guerrilla warfare. They started to ambush Muslims. And after ambushing them, they would kill them. So the treaty, the pact they had with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they were nullifying this pact and this peace agreement they had with the Prophet of Allah. So the Prophet of Allah said, tit for tat, if that is the case, if they have started a guerrilla warfare, he gave permission to the Sahaba, you can do the same. Tit for tat. <coughs> By chance, Mahisa ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. He captured a Jew and he killed him. When his brother found out, found out Khuwaysa ibn Mas'ud, he approached his brother and he started beating the hell out of him. And this was before Khuwaysa accepted Islam. And the reason being is he had business terms with this Jew. He had business terms. They were business partners. So he started beating Mahisa up. And as he was beating Mahisa up, he was saying, Don't you know the fat in your stomach? It is from the wealth of this Jew. Why did you kill him? Mahisa said, I killed him out of the order of the Prophet of Allah. And not only that, if the Prophet ordered me to kill you, I would kill you. I would not hesitate for a second. When he said this, this struck, these words passed through the heart of Hawisa ibn Masood and he stopped. And he said, really? If the Prophet ordered you to kill me, you would kill me? He said, Wallahi, I would not hesitate a second to remove you from the face of the earth. At that point, Hawisa, he started to ponder and contemplate. And he said, if this is the case, that you are so strong in your faith and in your Iman that it is not possible that the person on whose hands you have embraced this religion can be wrong. Extend your hand so I can embrace Islam. Extend your hand so I can embrace Islam. Saad ibn Khaythama radiallahu an It is said when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he migrated to Madinatul Manawara Initially, he resided at the home of Kulthum ibn al-Hadam radiallahu an. But her house was very small. She could not accommodate many guests. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to accommodate the guest, he chose the house of Saad ibn Khaythama radiallahu an. So now the Muhajirun and the Ansar can come to his house. Because he's saying his veranda was big. On the occasion of the Battle of Badr, 
Saad's father, Haythma bin Harith, radiallahu an, he said to his son, Oh my son, we are only two males in the house. And now because the battle of Badr is on hand, it is in front of me. You stay at home and I will partake and participate. You stay here. Look after the children. Look after the ladies of the house. At that point, Saad ibn Haythama, he said, Oh father, I cannot let this opportunity slip. Allah has given me an opportunity to show my loyalty to the Prophet of Allah. Doesn't Allah Rabbul Izzat give us opportunities day in, day out to show our loyalty to the Prophet of Allah? Is Allah Rabbul Izzat depriving us of these opportunities? But there's a difference. That opportunity was opportunity of giving life. Allah is not asking for our lives. Our sacrifice compared to the sacrifice of the Sahaba is very minimal. Allah is not asking much. But today this small is too much. And in those days, in the time of the Sahaba, the biggest sacrifice was small. The biggest sacrifice for the Sahaba was small for them. My dear respected brothers, you cannot imagine, you cannot comprehend, you cannot contemplate, not even in your wildest dreams, the love the Sahaba had for the Prophet of Allah. May Allah give us the tawfiq to read the life of our heroes. Today we have so much time for rubbish, to read the newspaper, to watch the TV. But we do not allocate 10-15 minutes a day just to read the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. As far as your studies are concerned, study, study thoroughly. Because we have no position, no status in these countries if we are not well off. And we do not study properly. We have to have a position in this dunya. Study is necessary. But we should not sacrifice our ultimate goal and our ultimate purpose and our ultimate goal of life. And that is to emulate the Prophet of Allah wherever we go. If we are going to the universities, we are going to the host, wherever we are going, wherever we are traveling, we are ambassadors of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People look up to us. And they say, this is the Ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They are not scared from us. Today, whatever image is out there, whatever image we have created, my dear respected brothers, we should not blame anybody. We should not blame anybody. Whatever image the West have regarding us, we have created this image ourselves. Allah is not unfair with his slaves. Laysa... Zallamin lil abid. Allah is not unfair with his slaves. If you are unfair, then what happens is your wickedness and your crookedness unfolds then. Then Allah turns the makhluk against you. And why? Allahu Akbar. Allah loves us so much that even in these times, Allah wants to, because Allah loves us so much, Allah does not want to see us a failure in this dunya and in the hereafter. He sends trials and tribulations upon us. So we can go back to the original root. So we can turn back to Allah Rabbul Izzat. This is a mercy in disguise. When a calamity befalls the Ummah, it's a mercy in disguise. It is a sign we are far from Allah. And Allah loves us so much. He is throwing the rope from the heavens to pull us back. Allahu Akbar. He is pulling us back. Allah loves you. Allah loves me. Allah loves everybody. That's why he wants to pull us back. But it is us. That we have distanced ourselves even more. We don't want to cling on to this rope. We are avoiding this rope. We are not clinging on to this rope. And what is this rope? This rope is the rope of tawbah and forgiveness. That we ask forgiveness from Allah Rabbul Izzat. That, oh Allah, until today, we do not recognize you. Oh Allah, we have not recognized the Prophet of Allah. Even the makhluk, the creation of Allah recognizes. It's the why hanana. The pulpit the Prophet used to rest upon in Juma in Masjidun Nabawi. It was a tree. It started to babble and it started to cry when it was removed from its place. A tree, a log of a tree is crying. The Sahaba said, we heard the tree cry like a child cries. And then the Prophet had to embrace the tree. He had to embrace the log to comfort it. 
Today we cannot even cry as much as this log of tree. How many tears have we shed out of the love of Muhammad? How many tears have we shed for the deen of Allah? How much did the Prophet love us? Once the Prophet was in a jolly mood, he was in a good mood, he entered the house. And Aisha, Aisha Siddiqa, radiallahu an, the beloved mother of the followers, when she saw the Prophet in a good mood, she said to the Prophet of Allah, O oh Prophet of Allah, make dua for me that Allah can forgive. Make dua that Allah forgives me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam start making dua. He said, Oh Allah, forgive Aisha. Ya Allah, forgive her past and her present sins. She was so happy, she was rolling on her stomach. So happy that the Prophet ﷺ is praying for me. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Are you happy? She said, Why shouldn't I be happy? You, are made, you have made a dua for me. The Prophet ﷺ said, I make this dua for my ummah after every salah. I make this dua for my ummah after every salah. You requested me to make this dua. But without the request of my ummah, I make this dua for my ummah. I make this dua in tahajjud for my ummah. The Prophet ﷺ longed to see you and me. Do we long to see the Prophet? The Prophet once in the presence of the Sahaba started to cry. Many a times he cried and he said, I long to see my brothers. The Sahaba inquired, Oh Prophet, aren't we your brothers? The Sahaba, the Prophet of Allah said, No, you are not my brothers. You are my companions. My brothers are those that will not see me, but will embrace, my, but will embrace me. My brothers are those that will not see me with their eyes. But they will bring Iman in me. They will bring faith in me. And even if they have to spend their wealth to see me, they will spend their wealth. Those are my brothers. The brother used to long to see us. He used to long to see us. He used to cry for us. Tears, tear after tear, night after night. Out of the love of this Ummah. And today this Ummah cannot shed one tear for that Habib. This Ummah cannot shred one tear out of the love of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It has become so hard because we don't understand the sacrifice Muhammad went through. The sacrifice he gave, the hardship he went through, the trials and tribulations he experienced. You cannot imagine. The Prophet of Allah said, if you have to collect all the trials and tribulations in one pan, the trials and tribulations that I experienced in my life, the trials and tribulations of all the prophets of the past. If you have to collect all of them and you see my trials and tribulations, my trials and tribulations, they outweigh the trials and tribulations of 123,999 Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam. Allah Rabbil give you me the tawfiq to implement and practice.